Today's the day. So excited. Super Bowl last night. 150 bucks on the coin toss. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs and all their fans. Eagles, sorry. Not this year. Okay, today I'm so excited I, I could barely sleep. I was like a little little child waiting for Christmas. So I'm on the verge of sitting in a seven hundred thousand dollar track excavator weighs about 80,000 pounds uh, it takes a hundred gallons of hydraulic fluid Scott I think it's a hundred and thirty gallon gas tank it's got the lifting power of almost 6,000 pounds it goes on and on it goes on and on and I get that thing for 700 bucks a day that's it why would I buy one why would I pay 300 three quarter of a million dollars if I could rent it. Now I did complain about the Mob and D-Mob. That is twelve hundred bucks, but you know, wait till you see the rig that carries that machine. So excited. It's supposed to show up on site about 9:30. He's not far from here, so maybe I'll take a ride over there and we can see him loaded up. That's how excited I am. I want to follow it there. Uh, and help get him in and out because it's a large piece of equipment. So that's what's happening with regards to that. So today though, I've got this job scheduled for the entire week. I hope it doesn't take an entire week. Um, and you know, as I've said before, most commercial projects, they don't want us to, to record this. Um, he hasn't said no, but he hasn't said yes. But it is in his proposal that I will be videotaping. Um, so we'll see how that goes also. But today, my main objective in the ground is frozen solid. Is I want to, you know, there's questions. They say there are three ten thousands. I had my guy Sal come and locate it. I'll show you that link. Uh, we don't think they're ten thousands. We think one of them is a large tank. Uh, but I don't think in the twenties you needed to store thirty thousand gallons for some motorboats. And I don't. I don't know what they were doing back then, but I don't think you need that much. I mean, there are gas stations in the 20s that did not have uh, the ability to store 30,000 gallons. But we'll, we'll wait and see. So though, and the reason why I'm gonna wait is because I have to inert all the explosive level out of this tank before I throw a sawzall on it. Because uh, otherwise it goes boom and people die. Uh, which has happened uh, in Westchester County. A couple of guys did not use the LEL, it's a liquid explosive level uh, meter, which my PID meter turns into that. Um, and they just threw a sawzall on it and it blew up. And the one gentleman that was cutting, he died. And believe it or not, the other gentleman died from the tank landing on him. So, and that was just, I think it was a 1,000 gallon residential tank. It was like on a farm property where they just kept dumping. Um, they use gasoline as a parts cleaner and they use that tank to dump it in there They were told it was a number two fuel tank just went there and threw a sawzall on it and it went kaboom So, you know, there's ways to To lower that explosive level uh, we use dry ice um, It's not not the conventional way people use I know guys that put a hose in the back of their truck turn it on and put it in the tank and use the carbon monoxide. Uh, some use CO2. Uh, I use dry ice because that's all I've ever used and that works. It's probably the most expensive way, uh, but that's what I, I do. So before I go and buy that product, which is very expensive, I think it's four or five dollars a pound and you need a pound per thousand. So you do the math. Three tens, that's twelve hundred dollars worth of dry ice, three hundred pounds. That in itself's a project, bringing that. And you can't touch that stuff, it'll burn you. So handling it is tricky also. So I'm gonna uncover it. I'm gonna try to grab one of the filler, the vent pipes, and pop it open so we can get a wand in there to pump them down and to see how they located, see any piping around it. 
uh, any underground uh, utilities coming in. Uh, so I'm kind of investigating today. I do have a vac truck floating around in the area, uh, Brian's guy, Jamie. So I can call him if I get one, of the, one or all of these tanks open, but that's what I want to do. I want to find out the size of the tanks, how many tanks, and get the tanks pumped. If I can get them pumped, I can get a little air in it uh, to help the whole situation for tomorrow when we dry ice it. That's it. Whew, that's a lot better than a 275 out, huh? Okay, well, here we go. We say a little prayer, or at least I do, because I kind of know these guys, and I don't want any of them to blow up. And we will see you out there. Greenwood Lake, New York. Okay, we have reached our destination. Beautiful Greenwood Lake. This gentleman runs a very meticulous marina. Very. Always impressed. All right, we're just figuring out how he's gonna offload that machine and get it in. We still have the markings left from Sal when he located it. I'm gonna say everything's gonna get stockpiled back there, man. Yeah, it's just you got that. That wire that I'll probably hit. Yeah. That's right. We got Jammer showing up. Nice clean truck. Corey's here. Everybody's taking their personal vehicles. All right. We will wait for this machine. Nice view of the lake from here. This is pretty cool the way this works. So that machine is 80,000 pounds. It is 266 horsepower. It's got a 24 foot, one inch reach. Nope, that's it. I mean, look at the size of the 80 compared to this. Crazy.
that deep, we're taking them. Look how deep it is, bro. That's definitely still explosive. All right, so when Sal came out and did this, we're already beyond the length of what he said. So, I can't lay any more dirt over here. I'm gonna say there's a third tank right here. So I need to load up Big Red and we're just gonna do a series of dumps. We're gonna fill up this area probably. Make sure no dirt is going down the hill. We're okay here. All right, we continue. Isn't this exciting? It smells terrible here though.
find out where this tank ends right now. And it goes beyond that. Is that the end right here? No. No. We got Brian uh, here. He's got about 2,000 gallons capacity, so I'm, we're gonna fill that up. That's why I got that. Well, no good, huh? No. Too much dirt? Wait, let me see. Yeah, a lot of dirt. Yeah, this ain't gonna reach. Got a longer one? A longer pipe? Well, let me just drop this down in it then. Do it. Look what the machine did to him. Yeah? Come down here and light a match. <laughs> yeah? All right. Not for this guy. Oh, every bone is open. Unless you broke them all off. Oh, I did. Wow, look at how it's just separated right there. Mm -hmm. These things are so old. Yeah? Full stream, he said. Not now. 
Hey, is there a bung down there? Huh? Is there an open bung down there? I know he can pump a lot right from here. Yeah, I, I can't this bung. Craig, would you saws all them? Yeah. I'm good. You're not worried about an explosion? I am. Me too. <laughs> all right, we're just trying to uh, pump from these openings and get out what we can. This tank is so old, so corroded, and so thin that, you know, the, um, the tooth did all this damage, which is rare for big tanks. So, and it's actually unusually a thin gauge. So the good thing about this is that you're probably not going to need any dry ice. All right, so I, I have, I've got a little bit of a difficult situation here. There's a bunch of dirt down in there. These things are so corroded. I can't use the lifting tabs because they're just going to tear. I don't have a thumb. I can't dry ice it anymore. You know, I can't pump anymore. So. I never turned it off. I mean, you can see the end caps on this. This thing is just riddled with holes. All right, I mean, these tanks are just so old and weak. They split apart. I mean, look at that. Split right there at the seam. 
So we're gonna we're gonna get in them and clean them now. Don't need to dry ice it. Because of these these toxic fumes, uh, Mike, we're going to use a breathable air today, not just respirator. So Craig's hooking them up, or fresh air, they call it. come up out of the top with the buckets. This easier, Mike? Right here? I got you, Mike. I don't know if we have enough drums to both. That, there's not a lot of liquid in that. In that one? Yep, it's gonna be all in the dirt. That's just the section that I cut out. You can see the thing got riddled with holes. Okay. We're putting up the safety fence now. There's contamination down there. Both these tanks are riddled with holes. See them all up in there towards the end cap. That's a nice size hole there. These are both going to fail. Uh, they were 4,000 gallon tanks. These are little, it's a 64 inch diameter. These are little 1,000 gallon sections welded on. So they had four. I've never seen that actually. That's the first time I've seen it. That's why as I was just trying to clean the top here, I caught the edge of one and it actually split it because they're so old. And this tank has a very large amount. That's still gotta get cleaned in there, but that's all water. It's a mess. Just gonna make this safe now. We'll see you tomorrow.